night. We're glad that you're here, and uh, we'll uh, work hard this week. We'll have a church Wednesday night, Lord willing, make sure all the kids are here. Then we got, uh, we're going visiting Saturday morning, 9.30. We had a good crowd out to go visiting yesterday morning. Thank you all for some of you coming out and helping, and uh, so let's help out. We actually had a good day on the buses this morning considering two big negatives. It was raining and it was time change Sunday. Usually that's a disaster on the buses, but it was actually pretty good this morning. So praise God, bus workers. Let's get to work on it this week. We'll get it, hit it Saturday morning, 9.30. You know what we need in the Lord's work? Consistency. Amen. Consistency. You can't build a church overnight. You can't do anything overnight. You need people that will get something and stick with it and keep on for the glory of God. Ezekiel chapter 12, the Lord told Ezekiel here that he was gonna use him for something, and he said, look at verse number um, um, three. Look at um, verse three. Therefore, thou son of man, prepare thee stuff for removing, and remove by day in their sight, and thou shalt remove from thy place to another place in their sight. It may be they will consider, though they be a rebellious house, then shalt thou bring forth thy stuff by day in their sight as stuff for removing, and thou shalt go forth at even in their sight as they that go forth into captivity. Dig thou through the wall in their sight and carry out thereby. In their sight thou shalt bear it upon thy shoulders and carry it forth in the twilight. Thou shalt cover thy face that thou see not the ground. For I have set thee for a sign under the house of Israel. I slowed down right there a little bit. I got to reading so fast there. I've been getting it a little bit lately about talking so fast. People write, um, write us letters and say, that guy talks so fast I can't listen to anything. And really, I, I'm trying to spit it all out at once. I, mostly times, Southerners are known for talking slow, but um, I talk just like I eat and do everything else fast. And uh, I can't help it. Pray for me. So I slow down. That I have set the for a sign. Is that all right? Is that better? I'm wanting to take off. Unto the house of Israel. And I did so as I was commanded. I brought forth my stuff by day as stuff for captivity. And in the evening I digged through the wall with mine hand and brought it forth in the twilight and I buried it upon my shoulder in their sight. I want to preach tonight on being a signpost for God. God told Ezekiel, I'm putting you, standing you up there for a sign. Tonight, I'd like to talk about sign. Um, Ethan, I'm gonna run out there and open the back of the trunk of that Jetta and get me a sign. It's in the trunk. I got a sign back there. I thought about a while ago. I thought I might show it to you. And I'm gonna talk about signs tonight. Sign in the trunk. The back right-hand door's open. All of them's open probably. Uh, they're important in our lives. Signs are important to all of us. Everything from the road we turn down to the place we eat to the stuff we buy, where we go to work, doctor, school, all of us. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable how important signs are for our life. This right here is a sign. That sign right there uh, has a very clear message on it. There's no mistaking that sign. You can stick that up right there. Isn't it amazing how, how they figured out letters and how they figured out how to write way back yonder in, in, in long time ago. And God let them figure out how to put words and thoughts into shapes. And you can see that and every one of y'all think the same thing. That's kind of weird, isn't it? But that, that is a sign. It says heaven or hell. That's a very clear message on that sign right there. All of us need one of these. Need one of these out in your driveway, or out in the street where you live. We're getting a bunch more of them for the youth rally in different colors and everything. Be a, be, share the love of Jesus with your community. That's what they need. Amen. Unless you're ashamed of it, and if you can't. But uh, this sign right here has a very, very clear message. You know that's what God wants every one of us to be a sign. Uh, uh, I was just coming down here tonight, this evening, thinking about this message. I saw Chevrolet. 
I saw uh, uh, McDonald's. I saw a sports place. I saw um, uh, some kind of exercise. There's just one sign right after another. Over there at Walmart, the big main attraction is Walmart. And then you got underneath there, probably 20, 25 different businesses. Their sign is out there showing you that that business is over there and what it is. Those signs are out there. Uh, we, we see major signs all over the country. If you travel at all, you, you go down here, you see a sign that says 321 South. You turn down that road, then you see I-85 South. Then you turn down that road, you go towards Charlotte. And you go down there uh, to, uh, to Charlotte, you can get I-77, go down into South Carolina to Columbia, and then hit I-26. You do all of that by sign. Now, GPS has helped a little bit in that. Uh, it, it really has. Uh, but still, even your GPS goes by uh, road sign. It says so many miles, turn here, so many miles, turn left. Let's talk about signs tonight and our God. Remember those stupid songs? I always think about it. Signs, signs everywhere, signs. That was, that was popular when I was a kid, you know. And I remember uh, breaking my time, do this, don't do that. Can't you read the sign? You know, uh, they said, uh, uh, well, it went down to, a sign said, long-haired freaky people need not apply. Uh, but I tucked my hair up under my hat and I went in to ask the man why. He said, you look like a fine, upstanding young man. Isn't it amazing how you remember the words of that junk? Uh, remember that old song? Uh, sign, signs everywhere, sign. And, people, and that's the truth, buddy. They say in New York City, they have one million signs. One million. That's a bunch of them, buddy. That's amazing tonight. So let's talk about four things about a signpost. Number one. The number one sign thing is authorization. Authorization. Uh, a sign needs to be authorized. That means it needs to be official. If you saw uh, a piece of cardboard uh, down, right down there at the end of the road and it had an arrow pointing that way and wrote with a magic marker, Charlotte, you wouldn't pay much attention to it. Uh, that sign is not authorized. But when you see one of them big ones there on the road and it's got that reflective paint on it and it's got one of those arrows on it, you know, buddy, buddy, that thing's supposed to be there. That's authorized by the state, the DOT uh, of North Carolina, the Department of Transportation. And that sign is authorized. I'm gonna tell you, a sign needs to be authorized. Most time you go down the road, it's on Saturday we see them, it says... Uh, Yard sale. You know, you tell whoever wrote that sign ain't used to, uh, you know, uh, I've even seen some churches. That, uh, Lordy mercy, I don't mean to be a ugly, but it's pitiful. Got the S's backwards, uh, you know, and, and the N's upside down. And uh, Holy Ghost Church, fire baptized in Jesus' name, snake handling uh, on Sunday night, uh, you know. And you can tell a lot about that sign if it's real or if it's authorized. And the, the sign needs to be authorized. A sign needs to say something and, and look official. Amen? I mean, it, it needs to be official. It needs to have authorization. One thing they asked the Lord when he was here one time, he was doing miracles and stuff, and they said, who gave you this authority? Where do you get the authority? I've had people ask me that down through the year. Who, who made you a preacher? How, who gave you the right? Uh, can anybody just jump up and start preaching? Well, they, they can, uh, but that don't mean they're authorized. I'm telling you, I am authorized to do what I'm doing tonight. I am authorized. I have an authorized King James Bible, and I'm authorized by the God of this Bible to stand and point you the direction that uh, you need to go. A sign has to be authorized. You can't just jump up and paint a sign uh, that says something and expect people to respect it and go by it. Uh, their signposts must be authorized. They are there at the, the, the state's order. They are there uh, for a reason. They are there uh, as an, a matter of importance. That, that sign is authorized to be there. They have official markings. Uh, you know, years ago before they made official signs, They'd have a, a bark cut on a tree or something like that back in the old days when the uh, cowboys and Indians and stuff, and that'd be your property line or something, uh, a, a tree cut down or a mark on a tree, and that still works in some cases. But you want a sign. You want, you want one that's authorized. You want one that's official. I always know when I'm traveling, if you see a, if you see a little sign like this and it's shaped like that right there and it's blue, 
and got a little red on it, white, right? What is it? That's an interstate sign. We all, we all can recognize that immediately. If you see big old golden arches like that, immediately, even the kids in here, that's McDonald's. Those signs are, they're there. They, they, they mean something. Them signs are authorized. And I wanna say tonight, God has authorized every single Christian in here tonight. You know why? You know where you got your authorization? In the Great Commission, when he said, go you into all the world and preach the gospel, and lo, I am with you always. There's the authorization from the Lord Jesus Christ that when we go knock on somebody's door, when we give out a track, all the power and authority of heaven is behind us. That's why we're not scared to go on bus route. That's why we're not. Uh, that's why we're not embarrassed to go out. Listen, when we go out there, brother, we're representing the King of Kings. We're representing the Lord God of the Lord God, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I'm telling you, little ladies out there, Miss Vicky over there, 99 pounds, soaking wet, uh, brother. Uh, she uh, when she goes out there, uh, she's 10 foot tall and bulletproof. Uh, knocks on the door when the when the Holy Ghost has got a hold of her heart. Uh, this uh, me and Nate went out there yesterday. Day, and uh, he went to the drug dealers yesterday. Uh, I stood back, uh, but uh, he got them, buddy, and it was real nice too, wasn't it? Real nice. The devil said, don't go back there, but you are authorized. You are authorized. You are authorized. You hear me? When you went to somebody at work, you're not building up yourself. You're not advertising yourself. You're pointing men to Jesus, and therefore you are authorized to do that. Hey, bus workers, bus workers, Wannabes, ought to bees, best workers here tonight. I'm telling you, we are authorized by the Lord Himself to take that Bible and go into the trailer parks and into the apartment complexes and tell them the greatest story ever told. Amen. Authorization. Number two, location. Location. Uh, a well designed, well located sign is no good if it's not at the right location. Uh, if you're going down the road and the bridge is out, it don't do a lot of good to have a sign that says, turn your clocks up Sunday. If you're going down the road and the bridge is out, you want a sign right there that says, bridge out. Take detour. I was preaching down at uh, Paul Crisco's church in uh, where that's at, Spencer, North Carolina. I think it was last year, year before, and I'm just one of them, one of them rainy times we had and the roads was flooded out and I didn't hardly know how to get there anyway and I come down the road like this and the, the road was blocked off. They had it blocked off. It's like a river going across the road and it, there's a sign there that said detour. That was right at the right place. I turned left, followed that, another sign said detour and it winded me around there and I, I, first, I finally got to where I was going. The location of a sign is extremely important where a sign is placed, right before, uh, you know, right before dead end, right before turn around. You know, like these, uh, like these uh, interstate signs, they're, they're uh, them crazy interstate signs, you know, uh, where you, you wouldn't think people would need this, but it'll, if you're going up the wrong exit, going the interstate the wrong way, it'll say, wrong way, wrong way, wrong way, wrong way. Now, I hope that it ain't, that ain't never happened to nobody in here. Heard about that woman called her husband and she said, honey, I just heard on, on the scanner some fool going down the interstate the wrong way. You better be careful. He said, that ain't nothing, honey. There's hundreds of them. <laughs> now, now that, that sign, when you start getting on the, if you started going up the, the wrong ramp, the exit ramp going that way, the sign will say, wrong way, wrong way, wrong way. And listen, listen, hey, God's got you kids in school. God's got you guys at work. God's got you ladies at work planted right where he wants you. Saying, wrong way, wrong way. There's a better way. You're going the wrong way. You're going the wrong way. Take you some tracks. Put you a bumper sticker on your car. Do something, put on your mailbox. We got Jesus Saves wrote on our mailbox. People know our mailbox. You know why? We're a sign saying, wrong way, wrong way. Location is very, very important. Amen. Cannot be, it can't be hid. A sign don't do any good that's hid. Hide it under a bushel? No. I'm gonna let it what? Shine. 
hide it under a bushel? No! You know what's wrong with some of y'all? You're a good sign, but you keep it hid under a bushel all the time. You don't ever direct nobody. You don't ever tell nobody the bridge is out. You don't ever tell nobody you're going the wrong way. You're a good sign, but you ain't no count because you got, there's mud all over. A sign with mud. You ever seen a sign when it snows or something, it gets just so mud and slush all over you. can't even tell what it is. You got, you got so much junk in your life. You got so much dirty stuff in your life. You got dirty movies in your life. You got bad habits in your life. You act wicked. You talk wicked. You cuss at work. There's so much junk covering you up. Nobody can't see you pointing them to Jesus Christ. Know which way to turn. They don't know. I've been in towns before and buddy, I'll be looking, I'm looking for a sign. I'm looking for a sign. I'm always, I like the way they give you a warning on the interstate. About two miles, it'll say 485, a mile and a half, something like that. Well, I'm glad you told me because if you get in a big city, when you go to them sign, if you're not careful, by the time you see your sign, you're done way over here in four lanes of traffic and you can't, you can't get over and turn off. How many of you ever done that? And you, you wind up passing it up and uh, have to go down yonder five miles and turn around and come back and try it again. But I'm going, and you're looking for that sign. You're looking for that sign. There it is, there it is, there it is, uh, 45 South. Get over, get over, get over. I'm glad that sign is right there and the location. Now, I'm gonna tell you, brother, I was so glad. There it is, there it is. That sign tells me the right way to go. I'm glad one night when I was 18 years old, I didn't know which way to go. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know where I was going to wind up. But I went to Nebo Bad. God had a sign. God had an old man standing there. And he pointed me the right way. Hallelujah. And brother, I got saved by the grace of God. And that leads me to my third point, information. I said first, authorization. Second, location, information. What the sign says is very, very important. A sign is useless or worse if it has false information on it. How many times you heard people say that some kid, there have been times when teenage boys wanting to pull a prank on somebody have went down and took a stop sign down I mean, this has happened. It's been on record. And boy, you know, I don't know what it is when you're a teenager, you want a stop sign. I'm not gonna ask for a show of hands here tonight. So I bet some of y'all got them in your garage right now. A stop sign, a, a, a yield sign, one of them yellow ones. Or What makes every teenage boy want one of them? I did, I did. I, I, I don't know, I don't know if we ever, I think somebody, uh, one of my girls brought one home one time. I said, where'd you get that? And he said, these boys had it and I got it from them. And I said, no, that's against the law. You can't be taking them signs down like that. And uh, uh, they, they took a stop sign down and these kids, people come down through our family and just kept going, got hit by a tractor and trailer and killed them. I know why, because that, that sign was not in the uh, right location and it did not have the right information. You can switch it and put slow instead of stop and get somebody killed. I will tell you tonight, there's a lot of people that claim to be Christians that are giving out some bad information. It's not just important to be a sign. You better tell people the right thing. You need to tell them the answer to their problem. You need to tell them what they got to do to be saved. They believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Point them the right way, people. Amen. Information's important. Amen. Yesterday, we was, out, we was out in the trailer park, and I got so aggravated. We, we got in there, and it just hit my mind, brother. And you know what I'm getting ready to say. We was up here knocking on doors on this trailer, and about that time, a little car pulled in, and I had my forerunner backed in somebody's driveway there, and I said, oh, y'all y'all want that part? And they said, no, 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 like, they got out. And when they got out of the car, guys all dressed up, had on a nice top coat, hat, tie, ladies had dresses on, and everything, and I knew right then, that's some church group. And more, then I looked at them, and I said, hey, how are y'all? There's about six of them, and they was going right behind us. They were Jehovah Witnesses. I'm gonna tell you something, people. I ain't trying to be mean or nothing tonight. I, you explain to me. Somebody explain to me. It was freezing. I had a sweatshirt hood up like this. My hand, I had tracks and my hands was freezing. And we was out there and I'm knocking on doors and here's these people that don't even believe there's a hell. 
out there knocking on every door in that trailer park and God's people with the right information, I couldn't drag some of you out there with a bulldozer. Explain, somebody explain that to me. I think I know the answer. The devil don't try to stop them. He does you. I thought out there, I told him, I said, man, if I didn't believe there was a hell, I would not be out here freezing my hands off, mud on my shoes, out here on a cold, old rainy Saturday morning. And then I got to thinking, and they went, we talked to that one man, and they went right behind us and talked to him. I started going around and say, you got the wrong thing on your sign. Would you go on? They'll make you wreck, dude. Don't listen to them. Don't follow that sign. Wrong information. Wrong information. And I think that one guy come. Did he come this morning? The guy that just came. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, because I looked over there and they just they had him showing, they had him showing scripture. Some of y'all ain't showed nobody scripture in months. These people out there don't even believe there's a hell. What is, what do they even get out of that? They ain't but 144,000 going to heaven, and it ain't them. Or the guy they're talking to. Why in the name of, you know what that is? That's the devil putting false signs so people will wreck their life and wind up in hell. It's the bridge is out, the bridge is out. And the devil said, nah, 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 it's fine. <laughs> Off into hell. False information. I tried to give one a track and he wouldn't take it. They never will take a track. I said, here, I'll give you something to read. He said, I don't need that. I said, you do too. You need more than you think you do. I said, I'll take all yours you want, uh, you'll give me. Yeah. It makes good lining for the cat's cage, you know. Uh, uh, that's right, that's what needs to be done with it. Put it in the cat's cage, it's probably too nasty for that. Amen. I'll tell you what, that's information. Information. Ladies and gentlemen, when you claim to be a Christian, you are, it's important you tell people right. I have people all the time, people here in our church. Happened this week, it's funny, especially this time of year when everybody's starting to read their Bible again. Got a text yesterday. One of our people from our church said, uh, what does it mean, First Samuel 9, when God sent the evil spirit on Saul? You know, everybody has a problem with that. First few times they read it. And then somebody else, uh, some other lady that sits right over here, she, uh, she texts me and she said, uh, she said uh, Brother Danny, what is Lent? Uh, she said, I got people, sir, you know, Wednesday was Ash Wednesday. Did y'all see the people on the news, that stupid looking uh, uh, dirt on their head? Uh, did y'all see that? How dumb, how dumb. You say, well, Brother Danny, you shouldn't be disrespectful. I want our kids to know that's dumb. That is not in the Bible. There's nothing spiritual about that. That is a absolute uh, bunch of junk. It's a hoax. It's, it's a false, that's false advertisement, brother. That's false sign. You know what a Christian ought to be able to do? Ash, there's no such thing as Ash Wednesday in the Bible. There's no such thing as Lent. You give up chocolate from now until Easter and God will bless you and you get drunk after that. Uh, that's right. I'm telling you that's what they That's a false sign. Don't follow that information. Amen. Have, have, brother, uh, have some reflector paint. That'll shine the dark. Amen. There's a lot of false advertisement out there in this world. I, I, uh, I travel a lot. I used to go on these roads from here to like Chattanooga. If you've ever went from here to Chattanooga and gone on Interstate 40 to 75 and then down 75 to Atlanta, you see a sign. And that sign says, See Ruby Falls. And I'm telling you, it ain't two miles down the road. There's another one. See Ruby Falls. And about five miles down the road, see Ruby Falls. How many of y'all ever seen the sign that said, see Ruby Falls? I'm telling you, when I first started seeing it, I thought, I don't know what Ruby Falls is or if she fell or if she's back up or whatever happened to her, but I want to see her. It made me, it made me want to see Ruby Falls. I still ain't never been. Lookout Mountain, Parrot Mountain, Tweetsie. Who would ever believe Tweetsie was even still in the world? Tweetsie was old when I was that high. They tell me old crow, old train, old, old, old tweets. It was old when I was a little kid. And they still have to tweet. That gets people's attention. That gets them done. You know why people don't get saved? They ain't no signs out here. Points, come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come to Jesus. We ought to be a sign, people. Give them information to come to the Lord. See, Rock City. Rock City. Rock City. I don't know what Rock City is, but I'm telling you, it must be. If, if you're going down this way, 
Some of them used to be J.R. You ever seen J.R.'s? Come to J.R. That's a tobacco outlet down there in Statesville. And there's two or three of them. There. I never seen so much. I bet you they spend half their income on advertising. And buddy, every doubt, coming down 77 from Virginia, it's J.R.'s. J.R., world's largest tobacco outlet. J.R., J.R., I don't smoke. I have never smoked in my life. And I went to J.R.'s. I did. I said, I want to see what this place is. And they got more stuff in there. They got, they got you know, junk and stuff, maybe some old kind of socks and boots or tools or something. I don't know. But it made me want to go. I liked, I seen one one time ahead up there that said, Walmart, Small Mart, see J.R. I said, amen, I like that. There's somebody, bless God, believes in their store and their product. And I tell you what tonight, we ought not to be ashamed to raise the bloodstained banner and say Jesus Christ is the answer. Don't be ashamed. You know what's wrong with Christians tonight? We're so scared to death, people's going to say we're holier than thou or judgmental or something like that. We're terrified. We're, we're scared to even give out a tract, afraid they're going to fuss at us or we might get a little persecution. Brother, some of them signs get shot. Some of them get, them old boy, you take shotgun and shoot signs with them. I tell you, but the, them old signs stayed right there and give out the information. Amen? That's right. Point men to Jesus. Bus workers, let me challenge you. Let me challenge every bus worker here tonight. You get out there and you point men to Jesus Christ. The majority of the people that we talk to on bus route will never come to this church. Face it. The majority of the people of this, that we talk to, we may never even see again, but we can point them to the Lord Jesus Christ. They might go to Mammal's church next Sunday and get saved. They, and it's happened before. They might go to Soul Church. They might get down on the floor and get saved. Point them! Point them! Be a sign this week, folks. Make up your mind. You're gonna be a sign and somebody can read you. This week. This week. Bus workers, it's no time to let up. It's no time to slack up. It's no time to just get your quote regulars and, and call it a day. It's no time to just uh, you know, say, well, I'm just tired of the bus. It's time to back up, dig our heels in, and say, bless the Lord. There's little boys and little girls. It ain't outlawed yet. And as long as we can run them buses, God gave us them buses back there. God gave them to us. God supplied the need. God put it on people's heart to give. It, it, it'd be a shame and a disgrace for shining light Baptist Church not to shine that light down at every trailer park, every little boy and little girl's house. You ought to see them yesterday morning. We knocked on the door and, they, and we pulled out them Twizzlers and their eyes got that big around and they laughed and smiled and they got on the bus this morning, didn't they, Nate? I'm telling you this morning, people, there's a ministry for every person here tonight. Be a signpost for God Almighty. Last thing I'll say is foundation. Foundation is extremely important. What does that mean? It has to be properly concrete, cemented, deep enough into the ground to stand the wind blowing, the storms of life, the rain, and the elements. You put up a little sign out there that says yard sale, first time wind blows, it's laying down. Buddy, them out there, they dig a hole about that deep, pour that concrete in there and put that steel down in there like that, son, that thing will stand. When the wind blows, it might do like that, you know, a sign sort of does like that. It might, it might, it might wiggle or bend a little bit, but I tell you one thing, brother, that thing will stand, that thing will stand the storms of life, amen? Can it stand up to the elements? Will the wind blow it down? Will the rain take it up? It's not, it's not necessarily how attractive a sign is, but it, will it withstand the storm, amen? Will it withstand the storm? You know the cross tonight, I don't know who puts them big old giant crosses up uh, around places, man, I'm telling them things are a witness. My, my, my. Witness to millions and millions of people. You know, a uh, buddy of mine, uh, Larry, down, in, down yonder in South Carolina, been putting up signs. And, uh, we got another one, y'all. You look for it. And one day this week, up at exit 105, right there beside the Chevrolet place, look up there one day this week. You're fixing to see it. And he told, they told him there's two million people We'll see that this year. 
They told me when we moved into this church, uh, the people over at the city said there's 56,000 cars a day goes right by here and sees our sign out there. Somebody multiply 56,000 times 365, 150 million or fifth. It's something, one five oh something or another, almost one six oh with a bunch of zeros at you. I don't know, it's 160 million. Close. Now you listen to that. You listen. It's more than 20 million. 500 times 300, I mean 50 times three, three fives are 15, dude. Yeah. Would we'll make it the, make it up to 20. Okay. And that's something. Ain't that something? Think about that. Think about that. Two million people a year. Two million a year. Just that one sign. Listen, there's been, there's been cases of older folks that were retired who didn't do nothing but go down on the street corner on Friday and stand there with a sign that says, Jesus saved faithfully for years and years and years and years. And they said untold thousands of people seen that sign. Get a sign like that right there and just get out. Take, take that to Charlotte Friday evening and just stand there. Go down to Charlotte and just stand there. You say, what if I get killed? Look, you're gonna get killed either way. Something's gonna kill you either way. You can't beat that way to go. That's a way to go, buddy. If you're going to get shot, I'd rather get shot standing up for Jesus Christ than I had me to, you know, rust out with cancer or something. Uh, and I'm telling you, uh, the Lord will protect you. you. Let's take that thing, stand in the middle of Charlotte and hold that thing up. On one afternoon, you would witness to more lost people than most churches do in five years. People, we've got an opportunity. We've got an opportunity to be a sign for God Almighty. For God Almighty. If our foundation is good, many a soul was lost because a sign was blown away or washed away. Come down there in the, in the river and the sign got washed away and somebody run into the river late at night. It's been on record. People have actually run cars in the river and drowned because the sign got washed down. I don't want people around here to wind up plunging into hell because I got lazy on God and let the storm knock me over. Stand, buddy. Stand. Go when it's fun, when it ain't fun. Go when you want to. You know, a lot of people like to do something when it's exciting. But you know who gets something done for God? People that go when it ain't exciting. People that go when we ain't having a big day. People that go when we're not having nothing special at church. Everybody likes the youth rally. I hear people all the time. I met people this week said, now I'm coming to the youth rally. I said, wonderful, I'm glad you are. It's better than nothing. But everybody likes that. Lord, who couldn't like a youth rally? But I'm telling you, buddy, it takes some people to say, I'll be there when the wind's blowing and the snow's blowing and, it, and the chips are down and people's upset and people's mad and fighting. I'm gonna stand right there and be a signpost for God. That's what churches need tonight. They said one time these girls are going down the road. Somebody took the sign out, said bridge is out. And they plunged into the river because somebody moved the sign. Have you let the devil move you? I'm, I'm, listen, I ain't arguing with you. It gets rough sometimes. It does. But every time I start thinking I'm having it rough, I think of them Christians in other countries and our forefathers that went before that got burned and tortured. We ain't suffered nothing like they have. The least we can do is be a signpost for the glory of God. Let's stand. Let's stand. Come on, Miss Desi. Ever, ever head bowed, every eye closed. Tonight, while our heads are bowed and eyes are closed, maybe God dealt with your heart about work and the people that you work with. Maybe God dealt with your heart. People that you work with going to hell. People you go to school with going to hell. And you ought to just get down here and say, Lord, give me grace. Give me grace to witness. Grab you a handful of tracks before you go out here tonight. We got some good ones up here on the table. Wes brought us. 
These are great, best in the whole world, laying right there on that table. They ain't doing nobody good laying there. They don't do nobody good laying in your dash or your glove compartment. Amen. Let's be a sign for the glory of God. Come on, let's pray. Come on, let's just get in this altar and pray tonight. Who will just come meet me here tonight and say, Preacher, I want to pray. God will make me a signpost for the glory of God. Amen. 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 Everybody can witness somebody. Everybody can witness somebody. Everybody can witness somebody. That's right. Come on. That's right. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Dear Lord, do what ought to be done in our lives. Lord, bless our church. Lord, let us be a sign that points men to Jesus in this lost, dying, wicked, hell-bound world. I pray for all my brothers and sisters here tonight that you'd bless them. Help them, Lord. God, help everybody. Help them, Lord. Do what ought to be done. Have your way in our lives. We'll thank you for it. Do what ought to be done in our life. In Jesus' name. We're praying tonight. People are praying. We're praying tonight. We're going to wait just a few seconds.